this is a K40 laser. Uh, you generally get these off of eBay. Uh, they range from about $350 to $450, depending on who you buy them from. And they're CO2 lasers. They have an output of about 30 watts to maybe 40 watts. They're pretty powerful. And again, they're very inexpensive. So the hobbyists like to snatch them up and do all kinds of modifications and everything to them. And I'm no exception. I had a little trouble with mine the other day and how this thing works is it's a very simplified gantry system. There's a square gantry dropped in a sheet metal box and it's made in China. So if that lets you know about the squareness and the levelness of it, it moves in two directions. Uh, unlike this guy who moves in a lot of different directions, moves in two directions. Uh, this is the Y movement. This is the X movement. Oh boy, here we go. And that's it. So you don't even need much of a controller to tell it how to move. You know, a printer probably has more sophistication to it than, than this thing. Uh, in the back is a laser tube. And this is maybe like a 30 watt laser. And there's a kinetic mirror mount back here in the corner. And the laser fires and it hits that mirror. And then the laser beam travels out here. It hits this mirror. And then it comes over to the laser head and it hits the mirror and the laser head. And then it shoots down. So laser pulses, boom boom down and that's where you get your energy and you're cutting from now yesterday i fired my laser up and instead of hitting the laser head the laser beam was hitting way over here in the corner so i got to looking at the kinetic mount it was actually this one up here but i can only uh, view this one real good and the kinetic mount right here you can see there's a spring and there's like a little piece of metal that ret retains the spring and that keeps everything pushed together and in perfect uh, harmony there. Or I couldn't think of the right word to say. And in other words, once you make a setting, it stays there because there's spring tension on the mirrors. So I think what happened was because these doors will slam, uh, I think the back laser door slammed. And one of these guys right here slid out and fell out and that caused the mirror to move drastically so I had to do an alignment so the goal of the alignment is to hit the laser head in the center no matter where it's at whether it's close or far or wherever so let me just put the air assist on right here I'm gonna fire the machine up and I'll show you what I'm talking about I've got to get my computer situated i'm going to do a test fire right now i would except my keyboard batteries are dead and the machine's going to home first so let's let it home okay let's do this shot here And you can see it puts a little scorch mark right there on the tape. It's maybe not perfectly in the center, but it's hitting the center of the mirror. And it also hit again. It's maybe not perfect, but it's roughly in the same area. Another hit. That's right where the last one was. And then the last hit. It's right. Perfect. So uh, the trick is to get everything level, uh, you know, perfectly level, get the gantry perfectly square, and get the mirrors perfectly aligned. And believe me, I just made it sound a lot easier than it is. So uh, fun little project, getting my laser realigned. It cuts a heck of a lot better. Before I did the alignment, this was a burn I did. And as you can see, it's a nice burn. After I did the alignment and cleaned the mirrors and got everything perfect like it's supposed to be, I used the same power settings here. And as you can see, it didn't just etch, it burned clean through the wood. So having a good alignment 
uh, will give you a heck of a lot more power and it'll deliver that power a lot more efficiently. So that's what I did with my time last night.